Back here live inside theCUBE, this is SiliconANGLE's coverage of OpenStack Summit in Portland, Oregon. We're live for three days, wall-to-wall -wall blanket coverage, We're talking to all the tech athletes we can find, and uh, always pleased to have uh, some of the luminaries uh, inside theCUBE. And of course, I'm here with Jeff Frick, my co-host for the week. Uh, but we have the CTO of Rackspace, John and Gates. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So, um, I see um, you're a luminary in the sense you got a great title, but really you're, you're involved in a lot of the machinery at Rackspace, sure. and Rackspace obviously well known for their business and hosting side, and you know, public companies, so that's all well out, well and good, but your, uh, your journey in the cloud uh, started out um, kind of just, you realized quickly that you, know, you had to get to the cloud, yeah. you had an acquisition, and then you realized we got to actually retool this thing, and we need, we need developers. Yeah, we do. And, <laughs> and right. then, you know, I remember talking with Lou Mormon and Jim Curry and the team, Brett, and, and I remember the days when, you know, it's like, this is happening, let's get a group of people together, and, and what was not real well documented in some of the stories out there on Wired Magazine and whatnot is that you know, Rackspace's passion for the industry and your experience. Yeah. You had a lot of people who had experience from bare metal, dealing with infrastructure, and the cloud. And you wanted to share that experience, and you guys were the catalyst uh, for OpenStack, but yeah. you didn't want to own it. And which is a very noble, and, and it needs to be pointed out uh, to the public that that was a key initiative for Rackspace. Yeah. So one, uh, congratulations, and uh, the success of OpenStack, of which I'm a big fan of, and I was critical at one point, started to feel like a marketing program, um, quickly galvanized around code, on our open source. It's very real now. Very I mean, real. Yeah, it's, not, and it's and no it, marketing it, program, it's, it's a real It's always deal. been real, but the thread has always been there, right, to, to, to ride the hype. Yeah. Um, but no, the team, we heard the great overview today. So just tell us yeah. how you're feeling about the current situation. You know, I think the situation's awesome. Our, our history of within OpenStack is as you describe. I mean, we were always big fans of open source software. We were big users of open source software. We saw how the web developed on open source on the backs of the LAMP stack, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP, the others. And we had a lot of people internally that were uh, contributing to various open source projects and we had an affinity to want to operate in that model, and so I think when we um, saw the opportunity to uh, sort of make it, we call it make a dent in the universe, I mean, to do something really big, something bigger than ourselves, uh, everybody sort of got excited about it, and we galvanized the, the entire developer community at Rackspace behind this idea. We, uh, the execs were, you know, some of them were on board, some didn't, didn't understand the open source community totally and didn't understand how powerful it is once it gets moving, but we saw this opportunity and we got the, the first uh, OpenStack Summit together in uh, Austin, Texas, uh, I don't know, what is it, th almost three years ago at this point, and uh, we got something going, and, and we just had to be, I mean, a as a company, almost overly, um, you know, sort of erring on the side of openness, even more than, than we should have had to because we had to get that community yeah. built and started you, and you off guys the are little, You guys are humble, I will, you know, yeah. I will say, you know, and watching you guys up close over the years, you have very humble. Yeah. It is an open, and now it's an actual foundation, so now you guys are associated with, you have a, a halo effect, which is what open source is about. Right. And uh, it's got a good stake in the ground, it has good solidarity in the community, but there's still a lot more work to do. There right? is. Underneath OpenStack and above OpenStack, we were just coming on with David Floyer. Could you just share your perspective, you know, someone who's been involved in, you know, obviously the hosting side, yeah. where you know infrastructure, and now you got to go to a, a modern era, which includes scale out open source. What are the operational <laughs> challenges? Well, it does require you to, to retool. I mean, you have to retool your entire organization. I mean, we came from an era of a lot of sysadmins, a lot, a lot of DBAs, a lot of people that knew networks and, and storage, and now we're transforming into this DevOps culture. We're becoming, uh, in, in many cases, a, a very large version of what our customers are at, you know, at the startup level. They, these are the cultures that you're seeing here on, on display of, of companies that are using OpenStack to retool how they do software development, how they drive innovation, and we're doing that internally, and the good news for us is that you know, being associated with an open source project like Rackspace has allowed, or I'm sorry, like OpenStack, has allowed Rackspace to uh, attract a lot more developers. A lot of really sharp guys and ladies that, that are excited about uh, contributing are now gravitating 
uh, into our developer uh, ranks to, yeah. to help drive what you said. A lot of work to be done. We have to yeah. continue to. And that's, to and that's the, the ethos of open source. I that's mean, right. the halo effect is a real dynamic it is. and there's an honor among uh, I don't want to say thieves, I want to say yeah. developers, but yeah. you know, there's a, there's a culture, <laughs> a hacker culture, the mentality. Um, how is that affecting your business? Because remember, you guys have a huge operation, right. and you have a cloud presence, and you're scaling up pretty fast, um, and you've had some bumps along the way. Yeah. We, we've blogged them, some of those in 09 and sure. 10. Um, Everybody's had bumps. But, but now, where are you now? I mean, you're looking, at a, you're looking at down the barrel of an enterprise market that's thirsty for cloud, right. looking at service providers who need low latency, uh, and in some case, integration of legacy applications. What do you, what do you guys, uh, how, is that, how is your business evolving technically? Well, I, you're right, I mean, I think there are different demands from different users of, of uh, clouds. We, we have our public cloud, the public cloud is now fully on OpenStack. We are, uh, you know, we've hit our stride, I think, in terms of, of uh, you know, having that operationally uh, you know, efficient in terms of the way we roll out code releases. We're rolling code every day to that, you know, so it's continuous integration. It's already on Grizzly. It's got the whole uh, you know, pipeline of, of you know, new features on the, on the horizon. We're also concentrating though for enterprises on private cloud. I think private cloud is where a lot of enterprises are today in terms of where they feel comfortable, where they can do what they need to do, uh, where they can run all the workloads that, that are maybe behind the firewall that they can't necessarily put in the public cloud. And we're also, you know, this week we announced a new um, pro product offering where we're enabling service providers, big telcos, small telcos, regional uh, service providers to get into the cloud business using all the best of, that Rackspace has to offer. So we can take uh, our knowledge, our expertise, our developer talent and distill it down into something that allows a service provider to get up and running very quickly. And so our goal with that is to have clouds in every context possible. Big public clouds, little private clouds, regional service providers, and have all of that available to, to really foster this innovation that, that OpenStack promises. I know Jeff wants to ask a question, but I want to ask one more question okay. uh, on that. Because you know, you're talking about uh, in a market that's very hot, it's emerging, it's right. rapid growth, a lot of investment going on in the end user, your end user base, or the users, uh, service providers. Um, but with any open source project, there's always what I call religious skirmishes, right? So what, uh, meaning, you know, over certain philosophies of code and, what, and, or ways to do things. What, uh, what have you seen that you've worked through um, and what do you see happening now that are, you know, not, I don't say religious arguments or, you know, technical arguments. What, what are the main threshold issues right now that are, people are talking about and, and debating and working through? Well, so, um you know, interoperability is one. You know, how, how do we maintain interoperability amongst OpenStack clouds? I mean, that's a, a topic that kind of uh, reared up right prior to the conference, and it, it actually is being addressed formally uh, within the conference, and it was already on the on the horizon to, to speak, you know, about here. Uh, so interoperability, making sure that we're all um, kind of staying true to OpenStack. I think it's all in, in all of our best interest as service providers or distributions of OpenStack to make sure that we're not going off in different directions. And so that's a big important one. Um, you know, how we, uh, at Rackspace for example, here's another issue that, that comes up is, you know, if, if we're uh, driving ahead of, of the pack, so to speak, I mean, we were last year doing some things to get our public cloud on OpenStack that we had to, to work around some things that weren't available in OpenStack yet. And we couldn't get them into OpenStack fast enough to go live on our dates that we wanted to go live on. So we did some things that weren't fully OpenStack. So this year we've got to go back and sort of figure out how to, to uh, re redo those things. A little, a little like, bit of like work. Like what, what, what example? Um, some of our API extensions, some of our, um, the ways that we, uh, you know, we don't turn on some of the features within OpenStack, we do them a little differently on the networking side of things. So uh, these are minor differences, they're not big differences. I mean, a, a customer that deploys at Rackspace and deploys at competitor cloud or private cloud, they typically use the same tools and the same APIs, but there are minor differences. This year our goal is to really, um, uh, as much as possible, get back to as pure but of That's a, the open benefit source. of open source. That's right. You can tweak the code. That's right. as you as can tweak you can the code. That's, and, and tailor that's to your the, business. The, 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 you know, the, the flip side of it is that you, know, you can go off in a little different direction, but that's yeah. also the opportunity for innovation. If we didn't have a chance to go, uh, you know, 
break a few things as we're, as we're going down this track of innovation. I mean, that's where the, the, the insight comes from. That's where the really cool things that make OpenStack so vibrant of a community come from, is, is people being able to try things out. So uh, just, it's, it's interesting how this has really helped you transform not only your business, but you know, the company, it sounds right. like. There's a new energy, and yep. as you said, make a dent in the world. So yep. I'm sure there's a lot of executives out there thinking, God, we're, we're dancing around the edge of, of open source, we're not quite sure how to plan open source, so what would you tell them in terms of really leveraging the power that comes from the excitement and the innovation to take a chance and, and, uh, and transform your company around it? Well, I, I would certainly encourage people to, to jump on as with, you know, jump in with both feet, so to speak. I think open source for us has been something that has uh, truly allowed us to do things that wouldn't have been possible without open source software, the costs associated with some proprietary or closed source software is uh, prohibitive in some industries and in some contexts, you know, startups for example, every startup ought to be looking at open source first in every way possible. We had a, a great uh, uh, case study today with HubSpot, which is a later stage startup, but they were making the case that, I mean, literally 95 plus percent of their software is open source uh, within their environment, and, and I think that every uh, company ought to be figuring out how to spawn a little innovative group within their organization that looks like a startup that is using open source software as much as theoretically or right. you know, humanly possible. Right. Uh, I mean, I, I just think there's a lot of value in, in the communities around them. The innovation is, is going fast. And you know, there is, um, there is a lot of benefit in, in having the kinds of people on your staff that are open source uh, zealots. I mean, they're, right. they're the guys that are the truly innovative and if you have them inside, uh, rather than pr you know, on, on a vendor premise, right. you, you get some goodness right. from that. When we're going to have Jim Curry on at uh, 3.30 tomorrow, Wednesday, and I think we might even have HubSpot as well, uh, coming on as well, or you can talk about it. Sure. Uh, we have to break now, because I know you're busy, um, but final word I want to give to you is, um, um, share with the folks, and this is, take your, take your technical hat off, okay. or take your rack space hat off, and, and talk, to the, talk to the audience about um, uh, what you see OpenStack turning into in next year, because obviously the growth is fantastic, 3,000 plus a year, next event in the fall is going to be pretty big. Just, you know, what, are the, what, what is it about? Explain to the folks out there real quickly and then we'll end it. What is happening with OpenStack and where is yeah, it going to go? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a platform that is going to power the future of IT. I mean, we're transforming the very nature of how we do IT right in front of our eyes. We are moving to a cloud world where uh, you're provisioning what used to be done in physical hardware is now done in software where things happen in seconds versus days and weeks. Uh, we're, we're moving to a world where we need cloud to really do the things we want to do. Mobile devices, big data, uh, the things that, that people want to do with their internet of things, all of those sort of rely on having access to this infrastructure that can scale, that's low cost, that's at you know, you know, uh, uh, something that can be automated. All of that is happening here with OpenStack, and that's why I'm so excited about it. Great to have you inside the queue where the ideas will grow, and this is going to be a, a great area. Again, you're hearing about open source changing people's businesses. Rackspace is one of them. Major competitive advantage, opportunity, scale out, open source is changing the world, and I think you guys put a big dent in the universe, and uh, this <laughs> is the beginning. Thank Thanks you. for coming inside the queue. This is the queue. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks.